Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dr. Rob Sin back for Stats 1401. This is our third instruction, instructional video. And today I am going through um, lecture notebook one. Okay, sorry, I was just trying to highlight this so you could see uh, it's notebook one. So if you are going to get the most out of this, it's time to pause the video and go to D2L, you click on start here, and then the fourth thing down in the list is the course calendar. You click on that, and prominently displayed in the center is um, lecture LNB is the title of the column, which is lecture notebooks. And you can see um, this video, this uh, lecture notebook one video. Okay, so what are we doing with this notebook? Um, the uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the kernel and I'm going to restart and clear output. And I'll just tell you why. That's so that you don't see the results of the um, cell until I actually run it. Okay. Um, so there's two things going on in this lecture notebook. First of all, we're going to use statistics to analyze two novels, one by Mark Twain and one by Louisa May Alcott. Um, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to see a little bit about how the code works and how the class will work. In other words, we do provide you the sophisticated code. If there's any coding to be done, we provide it for you. We don't expect you to learn it. Okay. So it's always good <laughs> practice. I just hit shift enter. Um, and again, this is, you don't have to understand this stuff. Why? Well, we're just importing the data science package. And we're making sure that everything plots correctly. Okay. And so just hit shift enter. You don't have to learn how to do that coding. Okay. Again, you don't have to do this. We're looking at two novels, Huck Finn by Mark Twain and Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. And all we have to do to load all of those books, all the words from all those books into the computer is hit shift enter. You do not have to do anything on that cell. And then notice what happens when you hit Huck Finn chapters and you can scroll through here and check, but the whole book is loaded into the computer memory. Okay, uh, let's hit shift enter on this again. So far, I haven't typed a single thing into one of these code blocks. Right now, everything is provided for us. And so now we're going to create a table that shows the first few sections of, of each chapter. And by the way, um, we can use the method show. And let's say that we wanted to show a few more lines, a few more chapters. And you see I said show 15. And so we have chapter 14, we have chapter 15, okay? So this is the type of stuff that you will be expected to learn. To realize that when I have a table, I can use the method show, and I just put in the number of how many rows of that table I'd like to show. And now I did show five, so there are only five chapters showing. So I just wanna clear the air we're going to teach you to use these methods from the data science package to do statistics. Okay. Um, now these, um, well, okay, this is getting a table together for the characters in the novel Huck Finn. Now, the three main characters that we're going to talk about are Tom, Jim, and Huck. Okay, so this is Tom Sawyer, and this is Jim, and you can see these arrays. These are how many times their names appear in each chapter. Okay, that the, the highlighted part is for Tom, and this is for Jim. And then it's going to take these counts, sorry, it's gonna take these uh, counts and it creates a table. And again, I can do <laughs> show five, for example. And it only show the first five chapters. So again, this is just a method that we can apply to any table and counts as a table. Why do we know it's a table? Well, because it was created with the table command. Okay. And you're like, wow, so what? Well, give it just another minute. So here's little women chapters. And 
again the whole book has been loaded you can scroll through that I don't want to but the book has been loaded and now oh wait I'm sorry I'm going to pause this video because I have changed some of the this cell I'm going to fix it and return in just a second okay I've fixed it and now I'm back and I'm just hitting shift enter to execute and oh look the result of all of this code is it's produced a line plot and even has a legend here so it can show us that the dark blue the highest line or the line that is for the most of the graph um, the furthest vertically away from the y-axis uh, excuse me the x-axis is Jim and Tom you see in gold and Huck is down below and so it's an interesting statistical graph by the way the thing that's doing it is just that um, sorry this counts right counts dot plot and um, and you we do use dot plot sometimes but it's not the most effective statistical graph um, I'll we'll talk more about what we're going to use um, but basically this uh, cumulative counts dot plot uh, produces this and you're like well what does this tell us about the book well what's interesting is the name of the book is Huck Finn but the character Huck is mentioned less than Tom less often than Tom and less often than Jim why is that and the answer is the book is told is a first-person narration told from Huck's perspective so instead of Huck's name being used it's used you can see Huck's name does get used in the book but Huck is talking he's the narrator of the novel so when he's talking about himself he says me or I uh, so his name doesn't appear as often then there's another thing we can ask about the book oh and by the, oh so so why is Tom Tom appears to uh, just disappear from the novel for the middle <laughs> for these chapters from like um, chapter 2 through chapter 32 uh, Tom is mentioned but barely and then here at the end he shoots right up perhaps as steep as Jim's graph and maybe even a little steeper it's hard to tell uh, to eyeball it and what does that mean well Tom appears in the novel um, in the first couple chapters so you can see that happening here and then Tom doesn't go on the rafting trip but he does show up at the end and has some adventures with Jim and Huck okay so you can see that from this statistical graph you can actually see uh, what's going on <laughs> in the plot of the novel and in the way it's narrated okay so now we're gonna do the same thing with little women you can see the chapters and there we go I just I just hit shift enter and went down through that we don't have to do anything here's again this dot plot method from the data science package that's being used to create this okay so now we've got Amy in dark blue Beth in gold Joe in light blue Lori in green and Meg in red now I don't know how much you know about the story Little Women but why do you think that the light blue line is vertically above the other four lines why is Joe why does Joe's name appear more often than any of the other four characters and by the way um, three of these characters are Joe's sisters and they they live together you know so the story involves all of them why is Joe's line well light blue line well above the other four and the answer is that Louisa May Alcott the author tells the story from Joe's perspective but it's third person narration so Joe's name gets mentioned a lot why she's the main character and it's third person nar narration so instead of like the first person narration with Huck Finn where it's I and me when she's talking about Joe she actually uses her name but there's another interesting thing so Lori in this case is actually a boy's name 
Uh, he's a nearby neighbor. Um, and it turns out that one of Joe's sisters falls in love with Lori and they get together and get engaged and they go on um, and plan to get married. Can you tell which sister? Can you look at the graph and can you tell which sister falls in love with Lori? Which sister is um, a couple with Lori? I'll give you a second to look at the graph. And if you guessed Amy, you're right. Um, and why? Well, because the dark blue and green lines stay very, 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 very close together. Why? Well, because when one character shows up in the novel, the other character must show up at the same time. They're mentioned together a lot. Why? Well, because they're a couple and they're hanging out together. So yes, you might see how Meg gets mentioned more often, but, um, you know, and Beth um, gets mentioned about the same number of times as Amy and Lori, but you can see that Amy and Lori's lines go very closely together. Why? Well, they're a couple. So I had never thought of statistics being used <laughs> to, to analyze literature, but it turns out that you can actually uh, learn a great deal about the novel. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, now number of periods, you're like, really? <laughs> Why would we care about the number of periods in Huck Finn? Well, and let's just take a look because the chapter length, this is the number of characters in the chapter. So chapter one has 7,200, uh, excuse me, 7,026 uh, characters and 66 periods, right? And you can see this is for the first few chapters, uh, the first 10 chapters, um, that as the character length increases, like here's a chapter that has 22,208 characters, and it has almost 250 periods. You're like, yay. <laughs> so, so perhaps that didn't uh, surprise anyone. Um, we also did that for... Little Women, and I'll just tell you that we are going to use the dot scatter method. What does it do? It creates a scatter plot. And this is a great statistical graph, but they've just done it. And I just want to point out that this the HF is the Huck Finn. And so Huck Finn is in dark blue and the LW stands for Little Women and they're in gold. So that we'll be able to see that. Sorry, let me. Um, well, darn it. It's hard to see the whole graph, and I apologize for that. Um, the dark blue dots are for Huck Finn, and the gold dots are for Little Women. And you can see, and, and what's the difference? Well, it appears that Huck Finn has shorter chapters, which, you know, might be a reason. Um, and then it also appears that the line of best fit for blue may be steeper than the line of best fit for gold. So they may actually have different slopes um, when we fit those trend lines just to the gold and just to the blue. And how is and, and what's going on there? Well, perhaps they're written at different grade levels, like Huck Finn may be written at, say, a fourth grade reading level. And, and Louisa May Alcott's book, Little Women, may be written at, say, a seventh grade reading level. So, so that may affect these trend lines and that may uh, affect why blue seems a little steeper than gold. Okay. <laughs> and then here we just do counts. You can see that in chapter 47, we can just get um, a number of, um, oh wait, I'm sorry. It's doing cumulative counts and it's dropping chapter 47. Um, and we will learn how to use where, where is actually very useful. Um, we don't use drop as much. Um, and then they've reconfigured this tape, this into a table. Um, now notice that they wanted to make a bar graph. So 
the bar graph is just a picture of this table. And notice what they use. They use bar H. And this is a, a, a bar graph where the bars are horizontal. And what does bar without the H do? Well, it creates a bar graph, just like you think. So dot bar is a method that creates a bar graph. And here the bars are vertical. Now, I will admit we don't use the method dot bar very often because we create histograms. And we have a method dot hist, <laughs> which will create a histogram. And the, it's a bar graph with some rules and the bars will be vertical. So we'll tend to use bar H if we're gonna make a bar graph. Now, don't worry about the first day assignment. We've already done that. And if you haven't done that, go look at the week 1B video. And I go through that first day assignment and make sure that you know how to do it. Okay, so, so just remember that, um, that the Python code that's needed to sort of build the structure was provided for you. That's the way it's going to be going forward. Okay, and then we can look at these statistical graphs and these different mathematical ideas, and we can analyze something about these two novels. Okay, um, and again, we will teach you um, how to use these methods but don't worry about the complicated coding. When there's something sophisticated that needs to be coded, we'll provide the code for you and allow you to use it. All right. So again, you don't have to do this because you've already done it, I assume. If you haven't, go back one video. And I hope everybody has a great evening.